So good morning, afternoon, or evening to all of you. I hope you are all doing swell in this uh, upcoming holiday season. It's been a very odd year, but today we are going to look at something I have been very excited for. We had one of these bikes come through the shop and it was out so fast that I barely even saw it. But today we are going to be looking at the Trance Advanced X. Anyway guys, like I said, we are going to be looking at the Trans Advanced today, the X series. So it's got a little bit more travel, a little bit beefier. We have to get to the bike shop to do that. This was another one. Uh, the first one that we got in literally went out the same day that I will hopefully get to throw a leg over at least for a video. I'm very excited about that. But if you like this content, by all means, please like, subscribe. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And if there is a uh, giant or Orbea at this moment that you would like me to go over, just let me know because they seem to be the only two that we can get bikes from because this uh, year is insane. Let's, let's just get to the bike shop and I will uh, go over this bike. So yes guys, there is the beautiful beast uh, that I have been waiting so long to actually get my hands on. And yes, I, I did just change clothes uh, because I really enjoy this shirt, not because I filmed this on two separate days. So my initial first impressions of this beauty is the lines of the bike. The lines on the bike are so, so good. I'm not necessarily saying that Giant makes boring bicycles. I don't know, like, I get excited for Giant bikes. Some of their road bikes are beautiful, I'll give them that. I'm talking strictly in the mountain bike realm. I don't know, I've never seen really a Giant bicycle where I go, dang, that's a pretty, pretty bike. Sometimes their paint's good, but they never just blow me out of the water. Now this is all personal taste, so take that with a grain of salt, but this bike, the way the frame is designed, I mean, just sitting here staring at it is beautiful. I think the lines are perfect. It just looks like an amazing bike. So with this bike, it's not only the paint that's beautiful, but the lines, the frame shape, all of it is no longer just because of functionality. You know, most giant bikes, to me, that's what they look like. They're, they're very good bang for the buck. All the bikes are very functional, so you are going to get the most performance for your buck out of a giant, in my opinion. But it's not always the prettiest thing. This new trance, to me, gives you that. So, just like on the, um, the, the Talon that I just showed you guys, these bikes are coming in and going out as quickly as I can flip my camera open to get a few shots of these things. So I'm sitting here in my room. I did get a good first impression on the bike, but I'm just here to show it to you guys. Without further ado, let's just go over the spec sheet and then I will get into what I really, really liked, maybe some of what I disliked about the bike. Yeah, let's move along to the Trance X Advanced Pro 29er 1 2021. Jesus Christ. So if you did not know exactly what the, the Trans X line of bikes is, I did a review, or a first impression, sorry. I, I, keep, I keep screwing that up. Um, I did a first impression of a Trans X, the aluminum bike, um, 
Basically, the biggest difference is the Trance X is a beefed up version of the Trance. So you get more travel on that 2900 platform. But the other big thing is you get a flip chip with the bike. We'll go over that in a second. But the travel on this bike is 135 mil in the rear, 150 up front, and it is Maestro. I, I love the Maestro platform. So the rocker arm on this sucker is composite and it is a trunnion mount shock. I really enjoy the trunnion mount shocks as long as they continue to be supported. I am always apprehensive about something new that comes out and then maybe a few years down the line something newer comes out and then it's hard to find parts for that thing um, or a replacement shock. I don't think that's gonna happen with trunnion mount. Too many people are using it, but I, I've always got that in the back of my head. That is always a worry. Um, Cannondale is notorious for that. My, my light died on me, so we're just gonna be getting a little moody with the one light setup, but I know we will all survive. And I spit everywhere. So let's briefly go over the flip chip. I, I covered it in the previous video about these uh, Trans X's, but if, if you did not know what the flip chip is, um, it's a little chip in the rear that you can flip around. You can fine tune your ride. So you can choose steeper or slacker head tube angles. It's basically 66.2 or 65.5 and the seat tube angle changes from 77.9 or 77.2. Uh, it also changes the bottom bracket height um, or drop, the bottom bracket drop. It goes from 30 millimeters to 40 millimeters. Basically in layman's terms you have a high and a low setting. So you have a setting for if you'd rather the bike to be able to turn a little bit quicker, shorter wheelbase uh, kind of feel to it, like um, slightly more towards the XC side of things. And then you've got uh, the straight up bombing down hills mode. That's the, the easy way to describe it. So on to what the bike is coming with, what the parts are that are being hung on this puppy. So the fork is pretty good. It's a Fox 36 Performance Elite. It's 150 mil travel. It's got the grip to damper. It does have the uh, the cut the cobalt the the cobalt the cobalt the cobalt the cobalt. All right, so see that little bitty light makes a world of difference. Let, let's move along. So the rear shock is a Fox Float DPX2 Performance, um, and it is custom tuned for Giant. A lot of people don't realize that that, that those shocks that come on your bike are custom tuned for that medium Trans X 29er, let's say. So if you wanted to make like a lateral jump, not be on Fox, because the DPX is a super nice rear shock. It might not always ride just quite as nice as you expect it to right out of the box because it isn't custom tuned for your bike. So it, it takes a little bit more effort than just buying a nicer product. That's all I'm getting into. The handlebars are the giant contact SLR trails. They are full carbon. They are 780s that come on this bike. The stem is the contact SL, not carbon, but it is the SL aluminum. It does come with the giant contact switch dropper. That's, it's pretty standard. It's not a terrible dropper post. And your drivetrain is going to be predominantly GX Eagle. So you have your shifters GX Eagle, uh, rear derailleurs Eagle, and then your cassette is actually an XG Eagle 1052. And the crank set is a Truvative Descendant, decent crank set as well. Uh, let's see, so the brakes. Let's talk about the brakes. So the, the brakes are the SRAM G2 Hydros. It is coming with a 200 rotor up front and a 180 in the rear. Uh, not a terrible setup. If you follow this channel, you know my disdain for SRAM hydraulic brakes. The history of SRAM brakes can be a video in and of itself. They used to be Avid. SRAM actually owned Avid. It's it's an Avid was so bad and had such a high failure rate they completely scrapped that name and now the brakes are just SRAM. I will agree with a lot of people. SRAM brakes, in my opinion, when they are brand spanking new, when they work 100%, they work great. I think they actually feel slightly better than Shimano's, but that usually is not long lasting. I don't know, there's always problems with these things. I have not found a single brake system from SRAM yet that has stood the test of time and just works. 
that's why I'm a Shimano fan with brakes. Real quick guys, we are going to change this dropper post out for Turkosaurus. That is why you're going to see this hideously long cable, uh, which we are just going to reuse for his new one-up dropper post, which I'll get into in a little bit. But I did just want to show you this bike in its stock form, so just disregard the long cable. Thanks and have a good day. I love the SRAM components when it comes to their shifters, derailleurs, uh, maybe not SX, but I do love the SRAM stuff. I love the company. They do a lot in the sport of cycling, so I do appreciate them, but their brakes, man. I'm not going to talk too much bad about these G2s because I haven't personally ridden them. I don't know anyone that's rode them super, super long where I can tell you if they like them or not myself. SRAM just has a bad track record with brakes. So with that being said, honestly, if I was buying this thing straight up, I would probably take those things off brand new, sell them to somebody at a smoking deal, and buy a set of like XTs. But they are four piston. That's something. The wheels, the wheels are super nice. So the wheels are the TRX2 carbon wheels. So at this price point, which you should, this bike retails at $5,500, it is full carbon wheels. The bike is coming set up with Maxxis Minion DHF in the front and the dissector in the rear. So you've got a 2.5 in the front, a 2.4 in the rear. Obviously it's tubeless. And there you have it guys, that is your basic rundown. So what is my first impression of this bike? I think it is a phenomenal looking bike. Now I haven't ridden the thing. I love the idea of the flip chip, but here again, I'm always of the camp. Is it something you're really gonna use or is it something you're gonna flip to one direction and like one better than the other and leave it there until you get rid of the bike? So, you know, a flip chip's toss up. But I think the lines on the bike, like if you compare this bike to the regular aluminum Transex, they don't look alike at all. This carbon frame is completely redesigned for a Transex totally different looking frame design than the standard Trance Advanced Pro. And the Trance Advanced Pro 29 does not look bad at all. It's not a terrible looking bike, but to me, when you compare it to this thing, like that Trance X to me looks like an awesome trail bike. Like I drool over this. I was happy to get it in and do a video for you guys, trust me. My first impressions, it knocked my socks off when it comes to looks, but the build quality is what you expect out of a $5,500 bike. It is full carbon, full carbon wheels, carbon bars, GX, it's a nice bike. The weight on the other hand, it did surprise me a little bit because most of these bikes, especially with like a 150 in the front and a 135 in the rear, I was guessing, over 30, like maybe 31, 30 on a good, good day. Let's get to the weight. That's pretty good for uh, a trail bike like this. That's a, that is a solid, solid weight. So this bike is a, a, a good customer, a friend of mine. And um, just because Turk is, uh, you know, very, very high maintenance, um, he's gonna kill me. He's changing a few of the components on the bike. So I would love to, once we get this bike completely set up the way he wants it, I would actually love to reweigh it again and and kind of see what it compares out to um, i think it's going to kind of be more of a wash mainly what he's doing change the dropper out to a one up putting the axis on here changing out the rear hub personalizing the bike to exactly what he wants that's all that's really being done but that's uh that's all that i got for you guys today enough of my ramblings about how beautiful this thing is and how much i've drooled over the the, the frame the curves the lines <laughs> it's uh it's getting weird in here. Again, if you guys want any bicycle for me to go over, it's mainly been Giants right now, and I've went over that in previous videos, but I will, I will do my best to go over anything. Uh, stick around, guys. I've got a lot of videos planned. I've been brainstorming, and uh, I, I love you all. I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.